Before we begin, three messages. Here's a riddle. How do you build native cross-platform mobile applications quickly without having to rewrite code and hire consultants at a huge cost? Titanium from AppCelerator. Called the easy button for mobile application development, it allows you to focus more on what's important, getting product out the door. Join the more than 1.5 million active developers who have created over 13,000 apps at www.accelerator.com. So, you've taken some of the advice that has come from untether.tv guests, built an app, and now you're turning your attention to generating some hard-earned revenue. Then you should be looking at Pontiflex app leads. Some of your peers who are using app leads are earning CPMs 100 times the industry average. And if you need any other reasons to start, I'll give you two more. You can run sign-up ads from top brands, the ones that you recognize, and it won't take your precious users out of your app. Go to appleads.com, that's A-P-P-L-E-A-D-S.com to sign up. When my company needed to develop a key mobile product, one that I was counting on as a new source of revenue, I knew exactly who to turn to, Macadamian. They delivered on time with incredible attention to detail, and I was able to get product into customers' hands faster than I ever thought possible. I've personally known them for 10 years, and they do make great products even better. Check them out at www.macadamian.com. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Untether.tv. My name is Rob Woodbridge. I'm your host. This is where we dive deep behind the lines in the mobile industry and sit down and have casual conversations with the mobile rock stars that are shaping what we're doing in uh, in this industry, this great industry. And this is uh, this is great because uh, it's capital to capital. Uh, I'm uh, I'm speaking with uh, Tim McLaughlin, who is in Washington D.C., the capital of the United States of America, and I am calling obviously from Ottawa, Canada, which is the capital of Canada. And uh, we're going to sit down with, uh, we're going to have this conversation with, with Tim around his company, SiteWorks, and we're going to really hone in on mobile strategy. You know, I think people cringe when they hear strategy. They don't understand what mobile is really clearly. And so when you put mobile and strategy together, it's like they don't even know what you're talking about. And we're going to get down to the root of why we need a mobile strategy and the things that you should be considering inside of a mobile strategy. And we're going to pull up some great examples of some of the stuff that Tim has done in uh, his company uh, that has been around for since 2002, which is a, a lifetime. It's like 70 billion. Well, it's like 70 bajillion years in the mobile space uh, and, and the new media space. So clearly, uh, you passed that uh, the rookie stage, and you're into that uh, mid mid career stage as a company. And uh, you know, Tim, welcome. I really appreciate you coming on and doing this. Thanks for having me, Rob. So it's funny, actually. As a side note, I think it's been the year of mobile almost since we started. <laughs> That's right. The, the promise was there. You said, "Hey, this is." I can imagine you sitting down there with your co-founders and saying, "Okay," and trying to convince people to come and work for you. Like, "Okay, this is it. 2002, the year of mobile." Can you feel it? For real this time. For real. <laughs> That's right. Believe yeah. me. Uh, you're right. And, and uh, I think finally we've, we've, uh, you know, we've turned a corner on that. I don't believe that uh, 2010, 2011, or 2012 are going to be the year of mobile because I think that by the time the year of mobile arrives, it'll just be ubiquitous. It, right. you, you know, it'll be, there's a tipping point and, and, you know, it may have already happened with the 5 billion uh, devices in, in, uh, in circulation. But, uh, you know, I think that when it does happen, it's when people start to take it seriously as part of their business, as part of their daily routine, and it becomes right. just in the background. It's always there. Right. Is that? I mean, I think people call that ubiquitous computing. I yeah, think there's many names it goes by, and and we've been talking about this, you know, hypothetically for a long time. But uh, you know, when people in places where they don't have computers or even you know continuous power are using mobile devices to do transactions, I, you might say it's already here. Yeah, I think maybe it's it's North America that hasn't moved quickly enough, and the rest of the world has kind of surpassed us in mobile use and and uh, relying on mobile as as uh, I, I, they probably don't even call it mobile; they just call it life, right? Right. <laughs> I would I would imagine yes. So, so uh, why don't we start by uh, uh, just a little bit of background about what SiteWorks is? So so uh, sure. shape some con context to uh, to what we're going to be talking about here, but for. Since 2002, that's that's a long time to be involved in this. Uh, the world has not been kind to business since 2002, I would say. Um, right. And and you are a over 100-person firm 
um, and uh, and thriving. So, what what is SiteWorks? Uh, so we started, as you mentioned, uh, actually in the whatever the inverse of a heyday is. Two thousand two <laughs> was not a good time to start a tech company. Um, so we started when people told us that. And in fact, I recall in that year, someone told me that the web was irrelevant. And why would be, we be starting a company to focus on this? Well, I hope you hired um, that person. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. I don't think I had a much longer conversation. Actually, but, <laughs> it's pretty crazy, isn't um, it? Yeah, it was. It was. It was definitely entertaining. Um, and well, it was entertaining because at least it seemed like I was right to some degree. Um, <laughs> so the interwebs fall apart. I think they're going to be with us for a little while. Yes. Um, anyway, the. Uh, we were started humorously to be a software as a service company that was before software as a service was invented and in fact if you look at our name it, it has to do with sort of content management uh, background um, we looked at mobile channels back then and as I mentioned mobile has been something that people have been trying to do uh, and rather trying to figure out how to make money on for a long time yeah. and the ubiquity just wasn't there um, at this point it is um, and given our background really in content management, which is a big area that integrates into mobile when we're doing more and more work in that arena. Um, mobile's become sort of a substantial part of our business now. Um, it was really focused initially on web, like you said in 2002, back in the, the, the dark days. Um, they didn't, it wasn't, you didn't have a real web browser on a phone, and so that just didn't make a lot of things feasible. Um, that certainly changed in our company now, we focus largely on con larger content management deployments and design of interfaces around that. And now in our world, we see mobile as just another channel, just like a web browser. You may even have televisions. We actually have a customer who's looking at billboard integration for content. Um, and mobile is obviously a big and the fastest growing channel right now. So, I mean, was it a... Was it a conscious transition into mobile, or was it just that's where the customer was pulling you, or did you kind of go out and seek those opportunities? We did go out and seek them. Um, we actually did some. Uh, what I think our biggest, one of our biggest successes was uh, was a prototype uh, for one of our customers, and because candidly we weren't sure that the that the money really was there, huh. uh, and it's a larger. I mean, it's a, it's a billion dollar company, and it was really it was enabling a booking engine for them. And they essentially, you couldn't book these hotel rooms uh, through mobile devices. And, and they were, it was debatable if people would really do this, especially when it's a really high end luxury brand. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have thought myself that people would be willing to book a $500 hotel room For on their own device. I, I figured, you, you know, you're riding around your limo or whatever, your Mercedes, you're going to hit call and tell the concierge, you know who I am, yeah. book the hotel, and I'll be there. Yep. Um, Turns out that apparently a lot of those people like to type their entire name and credit card information into their phone and book the hotel room that way. And so they they done more in a, they did more than a million dollars through their mobile booking engine in you know in less than six months or something. That's incredible. And so you know that was year a year year and a half ago when yeah. that all started happening and um, and so that's what we tell customers when they say, well you know is the money really there? Are people really doing? I mean there's all this social media stuff. And there's kids twittering and things like that, but is there really money in this mobile stuff? And uh, I, I think that's a very solid, <laughs> solid ROI where you go, yeah, it, uh, the ROI on that project was about four weeks. Yeah, um, that's incredible. So that, and, and that's not even, you know, that's not some funky new dot, dot com startup. That's that's a brick and mortar company figuring out how to leverage mobile. Yeah, yeah. we see that. Uh, Quite a bit in, in uh, you know in some of the early adopters like uh, up here in in Canada we had a we have a, a national pizza chain called Pizza Pizza, and um, you'd think that pizza is kind of a luddite uh, environment right where it's like you have to call there's a guy that punches it in and they fax the orders into the chains across the yep. country and but you know there's a there's a big technical infrastructure and, and they're looking to to uh, do a couple of things right? reduce their own costs. Uh, you know, right. the support costs and all that, but also kind of be where their customers are and understand yeah. that, uh, understand that very deeply. And this company did. So, you know, people were very critical about why a pizza app, like you just pick it up, pick up the phone and call. It's the easiest way to do it. But they understood that their demographic was university students and mm -hmm. who's carrying these devices, university students. And, right. uh, and ultimately, um, you know, who also controls the purse strings when it comes to, uh, you know, maybe a credit card or a credit card number? Well, parents. Right. 
and and you start to think about okay well this now all of a sudden you can you can put a credit card number associated with a pizza pizza account and uh, use an app and you there's no transactions between the student and the and the pizza place it's all goes on one credit card which is mon pause and it's right so all of a sudden you start to think okay well wow geez that makes a a whole lot of sense and right. uh and there are early adopter companies like your hotel that think mobile is important we just yep. don't you know but we don't see a lot of that do we these days <laughs> well I'm, we see a increasing increasing numbers of that for yeah. sure i mean i think uh the way we see it is is mobile is the web mobile is the new web um except it's coming on much faster uh, i mean going back to when we started that was of course post dot com blowout and um People were still debating the merits. They said, oh, well, remember Pets.com? Well, they didn't really make any money. Um, but a lot of brick-and-mortar companies, who we work with a lot of brick-and-mortar companies who are trying to figure out really what is the web strategy, what is the mobile strategy, how do those things fit together, mm -hmm. uh, do they fit together? Yeah. And uh, I think a lot of them are seeing a lot of their revenue driven online. For example, another example would be a, a jewelry company, a very large jewelry company, is doing, and I haven't been able to pin down the exact numbers. It's not a client of mine. We actually work with competitors doing potentially as much as 30% of their total revenue through the website. Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> and I never would have thought it. And uh, so, you know, I never would have thought jewelry, you know, you, you need to go touch it, look at it. Um, and I haven't confirmed this, but I know it's over 6 or 8%, and this is a very large company. Yeah. Uh, so it's substantial. Ignoring those channels is just at your own peril um, and I think a lot of companies are realizing that and mobile is and we see it as very similar to the web it, except it's coming on much faster I was actually curious when you were just saying you know how much do you need to be where people are you always see the studies of how much time people spend in front of TV or how much time they spend in front of the browser have you seen one that yet shows how much time they spend in front of their mobile device well no the, the, I, you know bits and pieces of one um they talk about uh, you know how mobile devices and tablets are eroding the screen time, the television screen time, uh, the same right. way that the internet was eroding television. I think it's a right. full frontal attack on TV. Um, yep. But they do have these statistics that say that you look at your mobile device, uh, you know, upwards of two hundred times a day. So right. the engagement it's, is right there, right? Yeah, I would actually say that in a lot of ways, you don't need to look at your mobile device continuously. No. In a lot of ways, you, your mobile device runs over, runs across rampant across everything, including you know your wife's your, your wife, your kids, everything, and that's of course why creates some issues. Um, but I'm willing to bet that you know yes, you may only look at it for a cumulative uh, you know, 30 minutes a day, um, but the you, you slight time slice that in 10 second intervals, and you've got so much attention span dedicated to it. It's it's almost you know it's quickly becoming your dominant channel to anybody. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I think that you know somebody once described it to me very well is that uh, you know it's Cro Magnum, right? Where we're we're, we're going to have uh, <laughs> spinal issues. In fact, I, I interviewed a guy who who um, who's built an application that really uh, adjusts, you know, sets an alarm off on the device when you dip below um, you know a pressure point that is actually affecting the spine. Oh yeah, that's smart, right? Because the head is a heavy object and it puts too much pressure on the spine. And pretty soon, you, you know, you don't have a concave. You know, walk uh, yeah, hunched over. Absolutely, you don't have a concave yeah. uh, uh, spine. Uh, you have a convex spine, and that's irre irreversible, right? And and they're, they're yep. starting to see those trends from this. They thought it was from knapsacks, but what they really found out it was from like people with their heads down, <laughs> looking at these devices. Uh, you hear always the, the horror stories of people walking in the traffic, you know, that's things right. like that. So I mean. Not that you know I would ever be caught doing something like walking around with my mobile phone or no running into things or ignoring yeah. ignoring the world uh, around right. you. But you're right. I mean, the attention that you give we give these devices are um, is increasing, and and uh, it's not just the attention. It's not like it's a cursive look. It's like it's an immersive look for those ten seconds. You are consumed by what you're doing with this for those ten seconds. Right. Um, just don't do it in a car because 10 seconds is, a, is an eternity in the car, uh, you know, to keep your eyes off the road. Sure. So when people dive into this stuff, you know, they went through this craze like they did with the web stuff. And you were around for the web um, yep. when it was like, hey, we need a website. I don't know why, but we need a website. Everybody else has got one. We need a website. Right. Uh, and so we saw that last year with, I need an app. Why? I don't know, but we need an app. Yeah. Um, 
And, and I think that people have just kind of pulled back a little bit and they're starting to think strategically about what it is that mobile can be for their organization. Is that a fair statement? Yes, that's dead on. And, and we, in fact, had some interesting and not always um, ideal debates with some of our customers where, you know, they came to us saying exactly what you said, which is, I need an app. And we said, really? So what do you need an app for? And because uh, we, we, maybe it's due to our background, uh, maybe it's due to the fact that we all lived through .com and maybe we saw too much hype and we always look at things critically. Maybe we're old and curmudgeonly. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, but we essentially looked at it and, and in one case, uh, we, we actually said, no, actually what you need is a mobile website. And in fact, that was for the hotel company. Um, because if you look at the characteristics of the, of the purchasing, um, most of them, the majority, are in fact from new customers. Mm. And new customers probably aren't going to clutter their, you know, their device with a whole bunch of apps that they use once a month. Right. Or, you know, at best once a month, maybe once a year. Yeah. Um, and so, and I think you're seeing that. I mean, I have to admit, I only have, like, in reality on my phone, and I'm, I'm a pretty heavy mobile user, uh, you know, I really use, what, maybe, maybe 10, 15 apps on in max, and then other ones every now and then, maybe once a month. Um, it's just a real estate issue. Uh, so we had this trend, this crazy trend, where everybody said, oh, I need an app, and apps are everything. And, and some customers have actually done extremely well with it. In fact, we have a media customer who did very well with their mobile app. Yep. In fact, they, they saw, they drove almost as much traffic through the mobile app to their website, do almost effectively doubling their website um, as a result of that, that app. But that makes sense. I mean, that, that is their media company. They are a continuous engagement, and they are even a background engagement, which technically requires an app. Right. Um, whereas many customers, it just doesn't. And so it was this, this intent of the land grab, and sometimes it was the board saying, why don't we have an app yet? And <laughs> yeah, a CEO with his gray yeah, hair exactly. saying, I got yeah. this thing. It's got. Any, I need an app. Right. I, I, my, my buddy has an app. Right. I need an app too. And so, yeah, essentially that happened. But you're but a printer. You don't really need one, right? Yeah. <laughs> that has gone. That, or at least we're seeing it disappear. In fact, at some customers, we are um, sort of backtracking and saying, okay, so now you've got all these apps out there. That's great. Um, you know, usage of some of them is not so good. Maybe some of them it is good. Depends, um, but maintenance of them is actually a nightmare because yeah. now you've got iPhone apps. If, you, if you're adventurous, you have an Android app. Sometimes that Android app's in not the ideal state of repair. Turns out Android happens to be the one that's now driving up in the market now, and so you're looking bad because it actually is very similar, and I hate to say this, but it's very similar to web. You know, Web 1.0, you make a really big investment in Web 1.0, and then Web 2.0 comes along, and you go, oh, shoot. <laughs> Did we really? Oh, no. How are we going to? Now we have to redo our whole website because we didn't, you know, we didn't have a strategy, which may come back to our real, very original point, which is let's think about sustainability. Yeah. We're not just going to roll out an app and just leave it um, because that's, at least in our business, I think everybody started to realize. You can't just leave your website. You can't roll out a new website and go, okay, done. we're done. We'll come back in five <laughs> years and we'll redo our website. For uh, Web 4.0, we'll be there. Right. Yes. I mean, customers aren't happy with that. Yeah. And um, likewise with mobile, I think that what happened the first time is everybody rolled out the 1.0 and, and then forgot to think about what it is 2.0. Yeah. And how are we going to go from 1.0 to 2.0? And oh, geez, you know, 1.0 actually shares a lot of features with our website and it also shares features with the Android version. Yeah. And it also shares features with oh, did you know that Ford's coming out with a with a console in their in their cars that's basically a computer too, and we want to support that too. Yeah. Um, and the then someone's going to come out with the refrigerators. Yeah. So you know, it's it's funny you brought up a great similar. point. You brought up a great point uh, early on, just about the you know the concept of of. Um, of companies coming to you guys and saying, "Listen, what we need is uh, we need an app because uh, we want to attract new customers." Um, and you convince the the hotel to say, "No, what you need is, you know, if if the majority of the people using it are new customers, you just need a a seamless way for them to communicate with you through their mobile. That's a convenient, easy to use UI. Mobile web is probably the best way. Don't right. force them to go and download the app. Right. But do you see that transition happening where where 
you get people in on the mobile website, right? So that they start to engage with that, and then they become lifelong brand lovers of whatever this is, this hotel or a yes. you know a retail brand, and then you can bring them into uh, an app space, so that you know you you do you give them an app, but it's a reward app, right? So that they yep. download the app and it, it manages their points, their hotel points. It gives yep. them free this or coupon that. Like once they're a customer, do you, is that part of, I mean, that's a big strategy. People are kind of missing, I would say. It is, it is. And a lot of people, I mean, the whole loyalty program saying uh, customer service, that arena opens up some opportunities for application development. It really boils down to, you know, the way we look at it, and we, we do an analysis, which I'm sure you've seen this sort of thing before, where you know, it, it all comes down to frequency and depth of engagement. Yeah. So if you're infrequently engaging with your customers, chances are you probably should just use the web. Um, unless for some reason there's technical features that you can't get from a web browser, like you know, integration of the camera. Yeah. Um, there's actually a funny thing, though, that most people, there's more features in a, in a mobile web browser than there is actually on a desktop web browser. Right. And most people don't realize that. Yep. Um, like, for example, they think you have to build an app to, do, to use the GPS features. Um, you but, don't. Nope. <laughs> and, it's uh, browser-based, right? Yeah, you can actually, do, and we, we've done it. In fact, we were told by many, we, with one of our customers, they told us, you can't do that. Other consultants are telling us, you can't do that. We said, okay, well, how about we give you a demo and, and, and you know, and, and they were suitably impressed, and yeah. of course that, that that worked for us. But um, well, Google does it. I mean, when you type in a well, Google, Google search, does now. and that's, yeah. I think that's the. Yeah, but that took a while. I mean, yeah. the feature was there actually a year ago yeah. or more. Um, Google wasn't even using it. Yeah. But essentially, you know, it's, it's going to be frequency and depth of engagement. Um, I think loyalty, where you're going with uh, you know sort of points, um, that is going to be customers who frequently engage with the company. So, for example, if you're a frequent flyer you might actually install an app to track or follow or, or, or do your flights. But if you only fly once every six months, that might not make sense. Yeah. Um, again, it all sort of, that's where we look at the two points and say, okay, just like on your desktop, on your computer, you only want to install certain things if, if you use them a lot. And, and then the rest is, the rest is, is app-based or the rest is web-based, for example, yeah, um, the, for, for infrequent use. Correct. Yeah, and but that doesn't mean web-based has to be the crummy right. desktop web-based. You can do a really rich um, web-based experience that, in fact, seems like a mobile app. In fact, that's what Ant Apple originally imagined, if you recall, when they came out with the iPhone. Yeah. They, I mean, this took them by surprise. Completely took them by surprise, right? The fact that people wanted to do apps was interesting. The whole I'm still not convinced it was by surprise because they very conveniently had their whole development environment ready to roll yeah but, but uh, yes it, it was a uh, it was an interesting model but, but now yeah. they're Sorry, playing the walking game that's a whole nother discussion well it is you know but <laughs> but uh, you know the whole concept of this is that you know wh why it's necessary you brought it out very clearly why, why it's necessary to have a mobile strategy and and and, and to I mean, a mobile strategy has to be malleable because the industry is forming around it, right? Um, yep. I, I love, uh, I saw this great video of you on ClickZ um, uh, where you were saying, one of the questions was, you know, what does this look like in five years? And your response was like, five years, man. Like, I, 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 it was the best response because people are now <laughs> talking, you can't predict. Um, you know, right. I, I, I sat with some, you know, intelligent people a year ago uh, you know, last January, January 20, 2010, and they were telling me that this was the year of the netbook. And I'm like, uh, you know, I think that I heard something about this thing called an iPad and a tablet and Apple and, you know, they're launching it in three weeks. Do you think, what, what's the influence of that? Nothing. Nothing. I'm like, <laughs> uh, okay. So you start to think about the impact in, 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 in months, right? right? Because that's that's what happens. Nobody anticipates this. And uh, so great answer on that. Um, oh, thank you. It's easy. It's easy to say nothing, or I don't know. <laughs> but you know what? People don't, and uh, you know they're saying that you know the 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 mobile industry will be fully mature by 2015. I'm like, well, really? Or innovation will stop what, after. What is the mobile industry? I I still want someone to tell me what that is because well, I I I look at mobile and I'm like, you know, we we talk about these. Everybody thinks that mobile means these things. I like to think of mobile much more abstractly. I mean, this this is a computer. Yes. In reality, um, it, it's a computer that is mobile, and maybe mobile is the characteristic we refer to it as. But I mean, I think 
you, in a lot of ways, I like to think of it more as ubiquitous computing. Yeah. Like that, that's a word that sounds, it's technical jargon, but you know, it goes back to the Arthur C. Clarke quote about, you know, technology is sufficiently sophisticated when it seems like magic. Right. And I think that's essentially where mobile is going to go. It's going to be in cars. It's going to be ordering your groceries. It's going to be, you know, when you're refrigerated, you pull out the milk and your refrigerator detects that it's gone. Is that a browser? Is that a, you know, an app? I don't know. I mean, it's, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It just it's ubiquitous does. computing. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that's, I, I mean, you've got to take this into consideration. And as the industry forms around you, I mean, how do you, uh, you, you don't want to predict, but um, you do have to be malleable in, in, in what it is that you're going forward with, with the strategy. You got to think, okay, um, you, you know, anything can happen, but we still have to, we can't wait. I have this conversation probably the same way as, as you. People come to me and they say, well, you know what? I'm thinking of getting an iPhone. I'm like, well, do it. I get you. I mean, get a phone, get a smartphone. Do it, do it, do it, do it. And they say, well, but I'm thinking of waiting for iPhone five. I'm like, why? Wow. Well, yeah, like it's and and when I sit down and I talk to some companies about mobile strategy, it's the same thing. It's like, well, we don't know where we're going. We don't know where it's going. We're gonna wait. We're gonna wait to see. And and my argument is like, you know, if you wait too long, you're always gonna be waiting. Do uh, you bump into that? You, you can always wait for the next thing, and, and yeah, like you said, you can perpetually wait until your competition runs right past you. Um, Steamrolls so, you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I, but so I mean, are you uh, are you you're facing that today? We don't face it a lot, largely because I mean our customers are sort of self-selecting. I mean, if you don't agree with this philosophy, then chances are you're probably not going to work with us. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, if you do, if you're forward looking or you feel like, you know, things are changing and they are, um, and there's opportunities to, to change the, you know, the world in a nonprofit way or change, you know, if your bottom line or top line is a, is a business, um, then, you know, we're oftentimes engaged. Are they fully aware of what mobile means in the sense that I think you are? I don't think most people are because most people don't study the graphs that show the, you know, computing's uh, you know, general adoption trend across the world, and then you see the mobile one that goes, you know, <laughs> shows a typical Facebook type adoption yep. exponential curve, and uh, it's pretty disturbing. I think they probably look at that and go, yeah, I think I've seen Gartner publish charts like that before. I'm sure it won't happen. Yeah. Except for it, it is happening. It is here, and this isn't a projection. This is a reality, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. No. Yeah. This. This is. This is the past. <laughs> exactly. Uh, this is not. You know, what what is going to happen? It has happened. Um, so, I think. I don't know. I, I think that someone who doesn't think mobile is here is probably just living in a bubble in a lot of ways. Well, I mean, when you're when you're working with customers and and uh, when they come to you, I mean. Um, are, are a lot of the people that you're coming to, are they looking for augmenting their revenue through through mobile? Are they looking for augmenting customer service? Or are they looking for uh, finding new customers? Is, is there something that you're seeing that's a trend? Well, I would say, unfortunately, and I'd, I'd say because I think this is actually not the biggest opportunity, um, unfortunately, most people come looking to find more customers yeah. because you know, sales is always that, the first part. and they, They're always the fastest movers or adopters of any, of any new technology because yeah. they go, Hey, we can find new people by being where those people are. Wouldn't it be cool? Oh, yes. Right. Uh, which is good. I mean, and we do a lot of work around that, and, and that is great. Um, and I say unfortunately because I think mobile actually offers one of the best opportunities to to maintain your relationship with your customers. Um, and so I would love to see more of that. And we are getting more involved with some of those things. Um, but right now, a lot of people sort of think that that's you know that's the job of social media. We're going to Twitter everything to to maintain our relationships with our customers. I'm not really sure that's probably the best solution long term. No. Um, I think maybe having a one to one conversation might actually be better. Your customers might actually like it more, um, <laughs> even. But right now, we sort of you know sort of that's the hangover from the social media binge that we're you know we're still in. But I don't know that that's going to be the long term solution. I think ultimately. I was thinking about this the other day. I think I would actually be just fine talking with my, the companies I buy stuff from if I could actually talk to them yeah. uh, in a convenient way. And so I feel like there's a huge opportunity for companies right now to say, we want to talk to you. We're not going to make you go out and air all your dirty laundry on Twitter. 
in order to talk to us. Yeah, don't get um, pissed off at us on Twitter for us to right. engage with you. Yeah, We'll make it easy for you. Yeah. Here, here's a, here's a mobile app because we engage with you frequently. Or here's a mobile website. Or here's a way so that when you're sitting on the bus and you're thinking, what a crummy experience that was, there's a way for you to talk to us quickly. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a, it's a huge opportunity. It'll probably take three or four years for people to agree with me on that, I think. But um, right now it is mostly sales, customer acquisition. So when you when you look at uh, at deepening a relationship with a customer through mobile, uh, you know uh, you know some great examples. Obviously, the most immediate one that comes to mind is always about um, you know uh, customer service or improving customer service or engaging when you have an issue. Like you're sitting on a bus and and it's a you know it's in a terrible state. You want to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. You can either do it, you can air it publicly or you can't. Um, I mean, I just went through something with uh, my video provider where I engaged with them in every aspect I could until I finally had to go out to Twitter and say, listen, you know what? It's been 20 hours and nobody's responded to me. Right. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm paying you. Right. And their response was a very curt, well, you, we usually take up to 24 hours to respond. And my response was, my business that's relies on you. 24 hours is too long. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. So, I mean, it escalates to that point, but when when it comes to... When it comes to that engagement with the customers, I mean, I agree with you is that, you know, it's cheaper to keep customers than it is to find new ones. Right. And um, you're, you're already having a struggle to try to get new customers through your traditional means, advertising, marketing, sales push, cold calls, web, SEO, all that stuff. Why add, like, being found in the app store to that list of, of, of a nightmare? Because it's it's so, um, it, it's so uh, competitive in there. Right. Well, I mean... Yeah, it's noise. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, so when, when it comes to the when it comes to bring you know keeping customers, are you seeing some good examples about of, of companies that are using you know mobile apps, mobile websites to to engage deeper with customers? Unfortunately, I can't talk. I mean, I, there's not any ones that I can point out that are doing a spectacular job. I'm I mean, looking for those guys. Yeah, <laughs> I wish I wish I could. I mean, there are customers we're looking at, especially in the industrial space that we're working with. Um, to facilitate their actual field people. So it's in not directly in customers, but it does facilitate the experience for the end customer because, hey, all of a sudden their tech who's out in the field can answer the problems on the spot, yeah. which in turn means that they get better service. Um, so people are doing a lot of that because that's a easy, you know, that, that's an obvious solution. Um, I think there's still a technical challenge with, you know, you're not going to get an app, like for example, I had an airline Actually, I might as well air my dirty laundry on the name. I won't. Um, this airline, I had the absolute worst customer experience I've ever had. And, you know, I didn't have time to go on Twitter. I wasn't about to you know, spend my time doing that stuff. Um, but I don't know that there is a good way right now or a good channel to have that communication with companies because companies don't have that channel open. Yeah. Um, most companies don't. But even the flip side of, of somebody who's given you great service, right? Yeah, you, it's in this. It's the same challenge. Like, how do I, how do I tell the company, whatever it's U.S. Air or any airline, how do I tell them that this person, uh, you know, the service that I got from this person was so good, right? That yeah. they should be awarded. Um, there's no, there's no easy way to tell them it was bad or good. Yeah, I think I foresee an app around this. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I mean, I would, you know, especially if it's a, free, if I'm a frequent flyer and and my voice needs to be heard. Um, so. Unfortunately, they're they're focusing on on business development and sales as opposed uh, to uh, to you know building a relationship with a customer. Um, right. And, and I think that you, you know people will come around to to your way of thinking definitely over the over the next months and years as as they realize that um, engaging with existing customers in an ultra competitive world is the best way to keep them. Well, I I mean it's it's not that I guess don't don't take me wrong. Sale there's a huge opportunity for customer acquisition in mobile. Right. Yeah, I, right. I think everybody. I guess what I'm saying is everybody's aware of that. The place where I think there's an opportunity that people are ignoring is in customer service. Okay. And you know everybody thinks about, for example, they think about Apple as this great advertiser. One thing that everybody forgets to mention is Apple consistently has the highest customer service marks in the industry. Yeah. By by a long shot. Um, so if you're wondering why people keep buying Apple products. Partially because when you call them up, they don't treat you like a jerk. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of a nice experience um, as opposed to many other companies where you call up and you're wondering why you had to pay them. Um, <laughs> so you know, it's it's a. I, I think it's under undervalued by a lot of companies, and if you think about it, it, it makes a lot of sense because you know customer. Um, what's the word? I just blacked out. Uh, what is 
consistency or whatever, the fact that they always rebuy yep. Apple products is is pretty pretty high. Yeah, uh, agency. So they, they they do. There's loyalty there. Yeah, usually, and uh, it actually the nice thing is it actually contributes to I'm sure to the profit margins. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you don't have to convince somebody to buy, I mean, that's why repeat customers are what you want. You want brand lovers for life. And, and you know, what I've seen out there, um, companies who are ignoring mobile as a way to engage with their customer base um, need to know that their customer base is being engaged by other mobile applications. You know, there are companies like Ditto and, and other ones that are, that are engaging, they're rating your customer service, mm -hmm. you know, on a network that you can't control. It's over here. And you're not right. doing anything over here to to even start to listen to that conversation, right. and it's happening, yep. right? Yep. Like that server that didn't do a good job, th that steward who didn't do a good job on the plane, you know, the the the, the you know the receptionist at at, uh, at your restaurant who didn't do a good job, or did a great job. People are already talking about that, and uh, and they're, they're you're just not engaging with that, and and uh, right. so people are talking about your brand everywhere. Now the question is, do you get in or do you get out? And uh, you're, you're going to be swamped if you if you don't uh, if you don't start listening, right? So what about um, you, you know? We talk about um, ubiquitous computing. Is there when does this get easier? Like when when do people start? When's that tipping point for for this industry where you know you're not now convincing somebody that listen this needs to be part of your business? It's more of um, it's part of your business, and these are the best strategies to start to integrate mobile into your business. Um, well, I think it's not as hard as a lot of people think. Might be my first answer. Um, part of the reason people think it's hard is because they think everything's new, or they think it's you know some whole new. And technology does it. It's it's a whole new world, and and I think everybody always thinks like you know software as a service. It's a whole new world. Previously, it was actually called ASP, and previous to that, it was called something else. If, if I guess that's the benefit, the benefit of working with people like you or me or someone who's seen some of this stuff before and goes, you know, there's a way that you can sort of plan for the future and think about how not to make this a, a dead end road. Yeah, um, that's the, back to the strategy part of things. I think you know the way it gets a lot easier, and and what I recommend to customers is maybe you shouldn't again dive down that path. Use some understood technologies. Dip your toe in the water, but definitely dip your toe in the water. Yeah. Don't 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 just stay out of it. Um, but but use some well understood technologies, like maybe some web technologies. You're probably already using them. You're probably already engaging. You know, why don't you see what happens? And uh, then you can kind of go further. I think the challenge is if you don't use what you've learned and you and you buy into the hype and you just say it's a whole new world. Let's jump in. Let's go do something. We don't know what something is. Um, you know, maybe take some of the acronyms off and all the jargon and, and try to think, have we done this before? Have we seen this before? Uh, and is there a way to tackle this in a, in a, in a forward thinking fashion? So I guess it, it, it's not going to get, it's probably not going to get easier technically um, in the sense that there's going to be a lot more devices out there in the future. Um, but there's ways to mitigate that. And I think if you look at what a lot of the West Coast uh, leading edge dot com companies in the U.S. are doing, like uh, Netflix or uh, you know Salesforce, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, sort of, um, as they're exposing APIs that let them uh, enable all of these new devices that that we experience in our lives. I mean, Netflix is on I think over two hundred different devices. Um, and of course, and, and what I mean by devices there is you know they're on my Xbox. They're on my Wii, they're on my phone. They're, I'm sure as soon as you know someone can put them in their car, they're going to have them in their car. Yep. Um, you know, and, and these are not just different phone devices. These are totally different. What we think of as totally different solutions in our life. Yep. Um, and the reason they're doing that is because they have a strategy that is is that they are executing on that was forward thinking. In fact, if you look, the Netflix app wasn't actually one of the first apps out there. Yeah. They they actually came a little bit later to the game, and what they did do is, if you were to pull up the Netflix app on the iPhone, you'd realize that a lot of it's actually a web browser, wrapped up in an application. Um, so they used what they did before, and they essentially tackled the model or, or tackled the problem in ways that they've done before, and uh, I think it's serving them well. It's that's uh, such a great observation. It's a great point, just to to go back on is that um, you know 
that first step doesn't have to be the biggest step that you've ever made, right? Yeah. Like that first step can literally be just do it, and and uh, you know, I, you know, it, it could be a simple example is just um, um, detecting location when somebody uh, goes to your website. So if if it comes from a mobile device, and they they type in your URL, show them something that's relevant to them based on the fact that they're on the mobile device. It, you know. Yeah. Don't show them the whole website. Show them a piece. Right. And yeah. And going back to yeah. If they're in proximity exactly. to your office, they're probably looking for you. Right. Point. Yeah. Give them the information that they need. Right. So something so subtle like that, so simple, could be the beginning of your mobile strategy. And it's not going to cost you a million dollars. It just costs right. you a little bit of thought. Right. It, I mean, that's the that's the biggest. If you want to ask what's the difference between designing for web and and mobile, it's actually the input output so the, the difference on a mobile device like this is my screen smaller it's a touch screen which is inputs different um, and you also have other inputs like location yeah and location is one of the most underused features of phones right now it's kind of disturbing because you, there's so much that can be learned from an input perspective by location um, you know obviously Google's doing it because they can refine your search results based yeah. on Location, if that's a relevant parameter, oftentimes you're searching for something that's within, you know, in proximity to you. If I'm searching for bagels, that might not be a bad idea to pull up bagels in the search, you know, for bagel stores that are near me, not like the best one in Seattle. But, <laughs> right. Sorry. And so I'm not in Seattle, as you mentioned. Yeah. I'm in that other capital. Um, so I think, you know, it's it's a it's a huge input parameter, and, and the hotels thing. Obviously, the very first feature we put on there is find nearest hotel. Crazy concept, you know. Maybe that's what you're looking for. Uh, <laughs> so then. It, it just seems simple, right? And um, but I think that the whole idea of of uh, mobile is just is that it's overwhelming because people do think that it's a new technology. It's a new it's a new stretch. It's it's going to be much larger than anything we've seen because it's yes. just going to be part of the bloodline of everything that we do. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, you know, I want to I want to leave um, people who are watching this and listening to this with with some kind of with some key thoughts about wh where they should go, what their first step should be, why they'd need this strategy. I, I mean, do you have you have a a thought on that? Is that listen, you know, um, do these three things. Find this thing. Find your this to be able to bring it over here. You know, what are that? What are those first steps of of mobile life that they should be looking at from a strategy standpoint? Um, well, I would say. One idea that, that, that occasionally, well, I recommend it more than people actually do it, unfortunately, um, would be to take what Google has suggested they do, is, is do, to do a mobile-first strategy. If you're going to roll out a new product or if you're going to think about you know, redesigning your website or how your, your marketing or customer acquisition occurs, start from mobile-first because what, you can, what that'll make you do is it'll make you start from the smallest possible list of goals that you're trying to achieve with that. Because you can only do so much on mobile right now if you're talking about you know, these devices as opposed to iPads mm -hmm. um, with the screen real estate. And so if you add on, okay, let's, have you ever heard, of, I'm sure you've heard of like top 10 from a web design. So do the top 10 features, do the, focus on the top 10 and don't get stuck into trying to come up with all 100 things that people could possibly achieve. Well, mobile might actually be the top three. Yeah. And that's not a bad way to do it is start with the top three and distill down to those. And then you can add the additional seven when you want to expand for the larger devices, the larger features. But there's a there's a whole counter strategy called the long neck or the focusing on the most common tasks um, that you can probably achieve by starting with a mobile first strategy. So that that would be what I would think about if I were trying to do you know customer acquisition or sales or marketing um, on both uh, you know web and or mobile um, in both either applications or web. The other thing is that when you get into apps and or, uh, or web on mobile devices. Think about search. Don't, don't make the mistake of assuming that navigation is a pleasant experience. Latency is an issue. Uh, in fact, I, I probably should start with that one. We've done some research, and there's plenty of research out there. The biggest annoyance to everybody in mobile devices is performance. Um, that's why you, know, you don't want to load. That's why a, an existing plain Jane website on a, web, on a little bitty screen it's painful because it takes forever to load, Absolutely. and it's hard to read on top of it. Um, so think about performance, but also think about performance in the sense of search. Navigation is painful due to having to click through five things. 
I won't say while you're driving, five <laughs> things while you're doing something um, else, like walking down the street. Yes, with, uh, with it in front and, of you like this. Right, yeah, running into things and, and trying to have conversations. Yep. Um, search is hard, but it can also be short cycle that whole process. Um, and I think, you know, think about enabling some sort of search technology as a way to you know, make people find what they want. Because the thing with mobile is people tend to dumb down. They, 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 they take what I said as the first question, I've got my top three tasks, and they say, okay, well, you know, maybe I just want to find the location of this site works office. Yep. And you'll find if you pull up our mobile website, that's what, one of the first features on there. Um, but I also might be looking for one of the white papers we published in the last two years, which is a couple hundred white papers. Yeah. Uh, so how do I do that by clicking through here? That that's, would be pretty painful to try to scroll through 200 items. Um, a much better experience would be enable a search that actually works. Right. Um, and then you can bypass that whole navigation painful experience. I see so many applications you know, on, on mobile devices, iPhones, et cetera, that essentially there's way too much clicking. Um, and it's, it's unfortunate. <laughs> You're basically assuming that, that, uh, that people will, will put up with that just because. Yeah, I, I think they probably will right now because it's new. Yeah. Um, but someone will come out with some a better solution. Um, there's a company that just came out with a new search product. Um, it looks kind of interesting. It's essentially Google. Um, you know, you type in your keyword search, but rather than pulling up, you know, a bunch of links to new pages, they pull up a slide through preview of the new pages. Well, it saves one link, yeah. but in mobile, one click is, is a lot. It's a lot of time and a lot of effort and. All those things, they come back to that performance thing I said at the beginning, but all those things are contributory and they're even more significant on mobile. Um, so optimizing that experience for speed, which also means think about things like search. Um, don't just avoid that technology. I love it. I love it. And I mean, it's, it's almost like, a, you, I, I, maybe I don't know how to describe this well, but I'm going to give it a try, is, is that you, you're really trying to do that one thing. That maybe you have 10 things, you're going to start with three, but mm -hmm. each one of those three, you do that um, complete. You complete it. You 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 make it sure that it is the most um, uh, full experience that you possibly can provide on a mobile device. So that one thing, you know, if if your goal is to to allow uh, um, is to help somebody find your office or your your place of business, then look at your website and look at your mobile website with that lens on and that frame of mind, and and do it till it's done. Don't do a half-assed job with it. Once that's right. done, move on to the second thing, which could be, you know, a ubiquitous, you know, a, a, a site-wide search, so that you don't have to click through to, to you know, forty different levels. Right. But well, just I mean, do it complete. Yep. Yeah. There's a there's actually a book uh, I can't remember what it's called. Something the, the user's long neck or something like that, where they talk about iterating on the focus of, you know, what are your top tasks, and it's it's an interesting concept. I like most nonfiction books. I probably only made it halfway through, but um, yeah, the concept is a good one, and I think it's especially relevant to mobile. Um, because it, it, it trains you to get those tests done well. But I think the speed and, and really honing that experience. So it doesn't necessarily have to be deep. It actually has to be fast. Yeah. Like, I can get it. Look, I can do this in two clicks. Yeah. Because two clicks on a mobile device is much more important. I mean, six clicks on a desktop because of the speed and, and the responsiveness and the dedication that you're putting into it is probably equal to two clicks on a mobile device. So the frustration factor goes way up. Um, Anyway, see, it just seems something simple like that requires some thought, requires some upfront thought, requires a little bit of strategy, a little bit of understanding of what you need to do as a company to be able to embrace mobile and bring it into your organization. And uh, so, kind of running, uh, running ahead, and and not putting that kind of thought into it. Um, will end up costing in the end anyways. Just you know, when you think about it, you have to re-engineer what you've done in order to to make up for the mistakes. And um, and it's gonna, uh, you know, it it could have an adverse impact on your brand. You could really screw up your brand by doing this improperly. Yeah, you, you definitely can. In fact, just sometimes we've recommended to customers don't don't go out with this because, you know, we've seen things where like this this is not. I don't believe that this is going to help you, and and then you actually run a risk of people seeing this and and never coming back. Yeah, because they go well. This is the experience. I'm not going to look at it again. So even if you do fix it in three months, they're never going to look at it again because they'll go, "Oh, you know what? That's broken." Um, yeah. 
In fact, it's it's a, here's a common scenario we see on websites is people's insert insight search. Sorry to flip over to web. Yeah. Their search on the little search box in the upper right of so many websites is so terrible that they've oftentimes trained users not to use it nice. and to go back to Google to search because nice. their own search is that bad. Um, it, I think the same phenomena can happen when you don't address something correctly the first time. You can actually scare away your users, which is definitely not good, especially no. if they're going to Google because then they're going to find your competitor and, well, you know what happens then. Yeah, and even even in, in uh, all the app stores, when you start to get uh, user-generated reviews of one and two stars with uh, with yes. bad comments, I mean, it, it might not destroy a large brand, but it's certainly going to influence a decision, right? And, uh, yeah. and, and when you start to think about that and it compounds it, it just shows the attention to detail is not there. The attention to the strategy for maintenance was not there. And ultimately, it, it whatever it does, it's going to have a hit on on your brand. And and uh, yes. be cognizant of that. This is this is a this is a good endeavor. It can be very valuable, but can it also detract from what you're doing? Right, right, for sure. Well, you know what, I, you know, Tim, this has been great. I, I um, you know. When you start to think about what mobile what mobile is going to be, and and I hope that we can at some point just get away from the whole concept of mobile and just you know maybe not ubiquitous computing because I don't know if anybody understands that either. Nobody does. Yeah. But it's just like it's there, right? It's like you walk into your room, your lights come on. Uh, yeah. You know, whatever it is, um, you, the thermostat adjusts itself. It's it's mobile, but it's it's just uh, pervasive computing around you. Yep. Yeah. I um, think some. Yeah, I've heard what the network of things, and yeah. there's all kinds of different analogies for this, most of which most people don't understand or no. And they don't have to. Make much sense. No, we don't have to. Yeah, I mean, we'll just leave it to us to, to figure it out and and, uh, and then have people use it, but have it in, in a seamless UI that, that you know, is not confusing, and, and but it requires a lot of thought. And I think that what we've gone through in the last 45 minutes is, is really kind of painting a picture for the necessity of long-term thinking around mobile. But yep. short-term thought to take that first step, just get it over with, to start to implement now but with a long-term vision in mind when it comes to mobile. And long-term for me, it's not five or 10 years down the road, man. It's like six months down the road, right? That's long enough term in, the, yeah, in our world. Yeah. yeah. So. so how can people find out a little bit more about you guys, about SiteWorks, about what you're up to? Um, probably our website probably is the best one. I assume you'll, well, SiteWorks with an X, as you know. Yep. Um, I just put that somewhere on there so someone can figure out how to spell it. Yes, I definitely um, will. Right up there. Yeah. <laughs> no. And essentially, uh, yeah, they, they can feel free to call in or check out our blogs or any a number of different ways. Um, we're, we're obviously we're talking with people like yourself, experts in, in different fields, um, frequently doing interviews and whatnot, and speaking at conferences. So yep. um, they can certainly reach out to us on any any channel they'd like. And Tim has a. I'll include a link here. He's got some great videos about uh, about mobile um, on Clixie. I don't I don't know how to say that. It's either Clicks or Clixie, but Clix. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'll, I'll include a link, but uh, you know a number of great videos uh, with your partner in crime, and, and I think that this is something that uh, that people should look at. They're short video clips and, and uh, dive uh, deep into the cut to the chase, and I think that they're they're of, of great value. So I'll include a link somewhere up there as well. Um, Sounds good. Because it depends if you're in Canada, it's click Z versus click. Z, you know, <laughs> I don't want to confuse anybody. Right. We've been speaking with uh, Tim McLaughlin, who is the president uh, of uh, of SiteWorks. Uh, that's at SiteWorks with an X dot com. I'll include yep. the link. Um, thank you for uh, participating, Tim. I really appreciate your time and insight. Thank you for inviting me, Rob. I really appreciate your time. Have a good one. Thank you guys who are listening and watching this still. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, you can reach me at, obviously at untether at gmail.com or at Rob Woodbridge on Twitter. And I really appreciate you guys sticking around and listening to this because I know you found some great value in what Tim has, has brought to the table and what he has said. And uh, check him out at siteworks.com. Tim, thanks, man. Thanks. Talk to you later.